So we all know how important executive functioning skills are and that we who have ADHD have executive functioning deficits. How could we not know? Because the ADHD industry loves to tell us over and over and over and over again how bad our executive functioning deficits are and how important those skills are. So there's no question in anybody's minds, right? that these are important, important skills and that we lack them. Well, in this video, I want to talk about some ways that some of those um, executive functioning skills can be hacked by those of us with ADHD. And by the way, just between you and me again, it's not so much that I think executive functioning skills don't matter at all. More, it's that I think that the very helpful and lovely and well-meaning people in the ADHD industry have become a little bit obsessed, hyper-focused, you might even say, on executive function to the exclusion of all of the other things that people with ADHD are so good at. And not only that, but they've become obsessed with executive function in a way that makes us, the people who they're trying to teach executive functioning skills to feel ashamed and rejected and incompetent. And that, in turn, ends up being even more disabling than the deficits in executive function that we have in the first place. So, just wanted to clarify that. All right, so now I'd really like to talk about a few simple hacks that I think can be really helpful to those of us who have ADHD and for whom some of these executive functioning skills are, shall we say, fluid, <laughs> soft, <laughs> however you want to think about it, um, loosey-goosey. All right, let's see. I want to start with um, organization. That's one of the important executive functions, keeping track of things physically and mentally so that you can easily find them again. And there's no question at all that those of us who have ADHD can be messy. I think the reason that we end up being messy is because we need to see the whole big picture of something. We can't look at things in little discrete bits and pieces and make sense of it. We need to pull all the pieces parts out and lay them all out. And when we do that, the most amazing connections happen in our mind. So I think that the messes we make are in service to our genius, but I do acknowledge that we tend to be messy. And the hack that I wanna offer for this, which has been really, really helpful to me is and don't laugh, because I know that a lot of people have um, strong feelings about this, especially my friends, my book friends, my writer friends. But I have had such great luck with following the practices of Marie Kondo. Um, I don't know if you know about her. I'm going to link her book in the description. And she's on Netflix. And basically, if you just Google her, you'll find all kinds of stuff about her method. The the fundamental part of Marie Kondo's method that I think is especially helpful to people with ADHD, well, there's two, two pieces. One is get rid of as much stuff as you possibly can. I cannot tell you how important this is because when you have almost no stuff in your house, when you have the bare essentials of what you actually need to live with, it's just way easier to keep track of everything. The second piece um, is even easier, and that is store things vertically. So, Marie Kondo has a whole way of holding clothes and storing them in drawers um, so that you can see them, so that they don't get piled on top of each other, right? You can't see the stuff that's underneath. Because you know, those of us who have ADHD are very out of sight, out of mind, right? So if you store things vertically, and not just vertically, but in clear containers. So I have taken to storing everything vertically in clear containers. Spices, um, oil and vinegar and things like that that go by the stove, all of my baking goods, uh, my toiletries, my makeup, my art supplies, everything. Everything that can possibly be stored vertically and in clear plastic containers is. 
Okay, the next executive function that I would like to talk about is planning and prioritizing. And again, this can be a problem. I think again that our failure or our inability to plan and prioritize is actually linked to um, our genius. I'm going to call it that. Let's just own it, right? We have a genius. Uh, but we're not talking about that today, right? Today we're talking about the fact that when we don't plan and prioritize, that can, well, that can get in the way of our genius. Even I admit that. So here's my hack. My hack is the bullet journal. And I'm sure that you've heard all about the bullet journal elsewhere. I'm not going to go into how to use the bullet journal. There's so many great videos out there. And in fact, I'm going to link here to um, the best one that I've seen so far, which is Jessica McCabe's at How To ADHD, where everything is awesome. You should definitely run, not walk to How To ADHD if you haven't already been there. Um, but I will link to her, I think it's a two part video on how to use the bullet journal and an interview, in fact, with the inventor or developer of the bullet journal who himself has ADHD. I will just say that I have tried every system under the sun and the bullet journal comes closest to helping me stay on track. And I'm going to admit that I don't use it perfectly. I wish I did, but I don't. I'm sort of an intermittent bullet journal user. Um, but when I start to feel things spinning a little bit more out of control than I'm comfortable with, then I just grab my bullet journal, I sit down and I start using it again in ways that help calm, you know, the chaos and the anxiety and help me stay on track. So absolutely um, big fan of the bullet journal. Okay, so the next executive function that I would like to offer a hack for is task initiation. And that is taking action and getting started, which is definitely hard for a lot of us with ADHD. Um, beginning a task in a timely way and not stalling or procrastinating. And again, although I think it's related to all of the things that we're really good at, it is also true that we often have a hard time getting started. We have a hard time initiating tasks, even sometimes when they are tasks that we know are going to be good for us, that we even know we're going to enjoy. Um, sometimes it's just hard getting started. So when you're having a hard time getting started, when you find yourself stalling and procrastinating, um, here are two tips, two hacks that have been useful to me. One I just learned recently from somebody else in the ADHD community, the concept of a body double. Um, and that is having somebody there with you, How, asking a friend to just come and sit with you or meeting somebody in a coffee shop and just working together, not, you know, not having a conversation and not socializing, but just having another body in the room tends to make starting work and getting work done way more likely. And I am still kind of intrigued by what the mechanism is for that, but I know it works. I know that the best way for me to make sure I'm getting work done is to make a date with a friend. So that's one hack for task initiation. The second one is one that was suggested to me when I was going through a really, really difficult time personally and emotionally, and I had to finish a really important project on a deadline. It was a project that I cared a great deal about, but it was very difficult for me to find the sort of bandwidth to stay focused on it. A friend of mine suggested that what I do is imagine that somebody is making the documentary of my life and they are here with a camera crew. It's kind of funny that I'm doing this, I'm telling you this, into a camera. <laughs> um, it's so meta, isn't it? But they have a camera crew in the room with you working on the documentary of your life and the thing that they are filming right now is this project that you're working on and it's very important that they get footage of you working on the project and so it doesn't actually matter if you're working on it um, it just matters that you really look like you're working on it so that they can get the footage 
And th I know this sounds kind of silly, but to be honest, it really, really helped. That hack is actually related, I think, now that I think of it, to a set of hacks or a group of hacks that I call the meta thinking ha hacks. What I mean is the capacity to think about your own thoughts, to think about your own cognitive processes, and to understand your own cognition well enough to know how to trick it. Um, I think that this is what all of us with ADHD need to get really good at. And the good news is that I, I think, I suspect, again, I'm not an expert on any of this, so I don't know, but my experience and my intuition um, suggests that people with ADHD are actually pretty good at metacognition. Um, that we generally just sort of live meta lives, like where we're here um, living our lives and then we're up here watching ourselves live our lives and up here thinking about ourselves what, living our lives. And sometimes we're even like up here thinking about watching ourselves living our lives, like it gets meta, 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 right? So anyway, all that to say that I think that this could be a really useful hack. And that is the more we understand how our brain works, the better able we are to trick it. Um, trick is kind of the wrong word, but to, you know, make gentle suggestions to it that it might want to work in a different way. Um, I'm all about being really gentle with our brains because I think the world has been really, really not gentle with them. And I think that we're all suffering a little bit of trauma around that. Another example of how meta thinking can be helpful. This is one that has been helping me a lot. I know now, and this is really a recent realization, I know now that because I have ADHD, starting tasks is difficult for me. I used to think that the reason starting tasks was difficult for me was because I was lazy and a procrastinator and that I had a flawed character um, and that that was something to be ashamed of. Now I know that my brain is wired in such a way that often tasks are difficult for me to get started. Take away the shame and it's just a fact that I know about my brain and now without any shame or judgment, I can try to trick it. So the trick that I have been using is to not um, ask my brain to take on the entire task. I ask my brain to just take on a tiny little piece of it and see how that feels. Because even if I just take on a tiny little piece of it, then I've already gotten started and the starting is the hard part. So for example, Every morning I'm sitting downstairs with my coffee and my husband comes downstairs to walk the dogs and he says, do you want to come for a walk with us, with the dogs? And I always want to in theory and in the moment I'm doing something and I do not want to in practice. And so I resist getting up to go out and walk the dogs and I convince myself, no, 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 I'll do that this afternoon or I'll come with you tomorrow. But if instead I just say, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go get my shoes. That's only gonna take me like 45 seconds to run upstairs and get my shoes. And once I have my shoes down here, then, um, then I'll decide whether I'm gonna come on a walk or not. And no, you know, my husband is great. He's like, no shame at all. If you don't wanna come on a walk, that's fine. He doesn't try to convince me. He doesn't try to like, um, tell me that I'll really enjoy it if I do go or remind me that this is how my brain works. He's just a very no judgment guy. So I run upstairs, I get my shoes, I put them down beside my feet and I decide then, and almost all the time, by the time that I have gotten started on the task, following through on the task is so much less difficult. So that's a, a specific hack about getting started on a task, right? Um, tell yourself you just are gonna do the very, very beginning stages of the task and then um, you know, spend less than a minute on that beginning stages and if you still don't feel like doing the task then you just give yourself a, you know, an out and no shame, no judgment. Um, that's a hack. The meta hack is knowing that that's a good hack because I know my brain and I know that starting is hard and I know that without shame or judgment. So you need both the hack and the understanding of why the hack works and you need absolutely to clear out shame and judgment for any of this to work very well.
really. Just the shame and the judgment, we've got to let it go because that's the very worst thing for us beyond everything else. No matter how disabling our brains are, the shame and the judgment that have been piled on them, and they shame, judgment, rejection, sensitivity, all of that stuff, we are not, we are not born with shame and rejection sensitivity. We are born with a deep capacity to feel things. And then shame is piled on us and so we feel it deeply. And rejection is piled on us so we feel it deeply and we become intensely sensitive to it. But we have to understand that the capacity to feel things is not the same thing as feeling shamed and sensitive to rejection all the time, all right? So to the extent that we can, this is going to be like the recurring theme in all of my videos, to the extent that we can get rid of shame and judgment and we can heal our broken hearts about the rejections and the abandonment that we have experienced and the traumas that those have brought into our lives, the more that we can heal those things, the more that we can shine and be just the brilliant, amazing, creative thinkers that um, we were born, well, that our brains were born to be. All right, um, you see why my videos get so long because I just go on and on. Um, All right, the next one is emotional control, which is related to what I was just talking about actually when I went off on my tangent. Emotional control. First of all, I'm not so sure that emotional control is nearly as important as emotional intelligence, which I think that we have goo gobs of, we people with ADHD. So I also think that what people in the ADHD industry mean when they talk about emotional control is they mean that we shouldn't feel so deeply and so intensely the traumas that have been done to us. And I really do believe this. I believe that when you've spent your whole life being told that you're not good enough, being told that you're incompetent, that you're too loud, that you're too busy, you're too distracted, you can't do this, you never do that, you're always this, you're always that, all of that that we get through school, through life, um, at our, in our jobs, that those are, tra that's a traumatic way to be in the world, to be constantly being criticized, rejected, abandoned. Um, and so I think that when we are told that we don't have enough emotional control, what they mean is that we feel things really intensely. We have deep intense emotions and we are unafraid to express them that much is true and i think i think that the depth of our emotions and our willingness um, and capacity for expressing them are one of our most marvelous strengths i think that it's a beautiful thing to feel deeply and to express those emotions I think what really makes the world uncomfortable is that we feel deeply our trauma. We feel deeply the rejections. We feel deeply the abandonment. We feel deeply the relentless criticism. We feel deeply that we've been asked over and over and over and over again as children and as teenagers and as young adults to be able to do things, executive functions, that we can't do. And that don't really matter that much and certainly not as much as the things that we're really good at which nobody ever wants to talk about because they're so incessantly going on and on and on about how we lose our keys and how we forget to respond to emails and the messes we make and all the rest of it right so i don't actually even accept that this notion of emotional control is a an executive function that is necessary in the same way that maybe the others I'm willing to concede about. I think what people with ADHD need is not to be told that we need to control our emotions better. I think what we need is really good therapy, is really good um, support, 
Uh, we need really good love and self-love and self-awareness and we need to learn how to create boundaries and to um, believe in our right to take up space in the world. And I think that if we all did that work, that this whole issue of emotional control would just go away. So that's my, the hack that I had on my list is mindfulness. And I do think that a mindfulness practice is helpful in all of those things. And a mindfulness practice, even in the short term, while you're doing that work, can help you become less reactive. Um, and emotional reactivity is not a good thing, but it's sometimes um, a completely reasonable or understandable thing. Uh, and certainly while you're doing the work of resolving your heartbreak and um, resolving your traumas, mindfulness can be helpful. The other thing to do is just stay away from the situations and the people that push your buttons and make you reactive to the extent that you can. And I think that that's six. I wasn't really keeping track because you know I have ADHD. <laughs> Um, but I think that that's six. And I think I said that I was going to do six. Maybe I didn't. I don't remember. But anyway, regardless, I'm going to give you a bonus. A bonus hack, which I think, in addition to the metacognition hack, which I think is pretty awesome, I really think that once we understand how our brain works and we, um, and we reject shame and judgment and we do our own inner work and feel confident and we are self-aware and we love ourselves, then... The, the metacognition hack is really the only one you need and you'll come up with all the rest of the hacks on your own. But this is the, this is the number one best hack of all time. And I am completely serious here, 100% serious. And that is the things that you're not good at, outsource them, outsource them. This is why I don't understand why the ADHD industry is so freaking focused on executive function. It's all anybody talks about. It's all anybody focuses on with kids. And it's damaging them to be so hyper-focused on things that don't really matter and that these kids are never going to be good at. They just aren't. So instead, let's focus at the, on the things, the marvelous things that these kids and we as adults are good at, and the rest of it, hack it if you can and outsource it otherwise. Or really, the best thing is just to outsource as much of it as possible. And I already hear you saying, oh, but I can't afford that. I don't, you know, how would I do that? We already do this in so many ways and we don't think twice about the fact that it costs money and that it means that we can't do other things. For example, most of us hire someone to change the oil in our car. We hire people often to shovel our sidewalk when it's snowy, to do our lawn work. I mean, we don't all hire people to do all of those things, but most of us hire people to do some of those things, right? When we go out to eat, we hire somebody to cook for us and to serve our meal. Um, there are grocery delivery services now. Many of us, I don't yet, but I will soon, have a housekeeping service that comes. These are good things to do. We only have so much time in a day and so many days in the rest of our lives. And when we spend time doing things that we're not good at, we're wasting a lot of time that we could be doing things that we are good at and that we love and that bring us joy and happiness um, and make the world a better place. And so we should. It honors the work. It honors the skill involved to hire somebody to do that work. I think that we don't hire people to do our executive functioning work because we're ashamed that we can't do it. Because we have been so indoctrinated by the ADHD industry to feel like we are incompetent failures for having not acquired these skills which do not come naturally to us, in which we are ultimately and inevitably going to fail to some degree. So we feel shame about that. We feel shame and so we feel like we don't deserve to hire someone to do that for us. 
that we don't deserve to take money away from other things that maybe our family would enjoy, right? Um, we don't deserve that. We don't deserve to deprive our children of the latest toy that they might want or to say, no, we're not gonna go on a super expensive vacation. Instead, we're gonna make our vacation in another way that it doesn't involve so much money. We're gonna do that so that I can hire somebody to take on my executive functioning deficits. We don't feel like we deserve that because we're so full of shame, but that is absurd that is ridiculous if you think about it right because in the long run who's going to benefit if you can take away all of those tasks that you hate and that you're not good at and that you're never going to get good at and if you could have them done really well by people who are actually really good at it and then you could focus on the things that you love in the end it probably is going to bring you more money and you can buy your kid the toy or go on the vacation. But even if it doesn't bring you more money, it's going to fill your life with joy and happiness and contentment. And that is so much better for everybody than even that fancy expensive vacation was or that toy. So please, I'm going to do a whole video on this because I just think that the obvious answer the second that you have even the teeniest tiniest bit of extra money in your life and I'm talking about don't go to the movies don't buy the tennis shoes don't get a new car don't um, go on vacation don't do any of those things before you hire somebody to help you with your executive functioning deficits because in the end that's gonna make so much more goodness in your life than any of those things will all right, so um, I don't think that I'm really capable of doing a short listicle video. Um, it's just sort of my nature to go on and on. I do have big thoughts and I have big feelings about those big thoughts and um, yeah. So I hope if you've made it to the end of this video that um, you know, there's been something useful in it, that maybe you've been a little entertained, maybe um, some thoughts, have been provoked in you. That's the thing that I hope most of all. Uh, if any of those things are true, I really would love to have you subscribe to my channel and to hit the notification bell so that you never miss another one of these lovely rambly videos in which I share pretty much everything that's in my brain in real time. And shoot me a comment, like the video, do all the things, you know, you know the drill. And I will see you tomorrow for Wildcard Wednesday. Take care. Bye.